Hi guys, welcome back to The Crafty Home. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Tanya. Today I am going to show you how I add highlights to my balayage hair. Um, I've already done it, so I'm just gonna show you how I get this look and how I get it to look natural and like small highlights versus traditional weaving highlights. I'm gonna go ahead and get right into it. Let's go ahead and get started. Make sure you have your coffee. <laughs> just kidding. So the first thing I am using this Clairol Frost and Tip. I will not use the whole box. I will kind of portion it out so that I get three to four uses out of it. I'm not adding a ton of highlight to my hair because my hair is a balayage and you don't want heavy highlights in a balayage up top. And that's all I'm doing is my roots anyway. So I don't need the whole box. I don't have any proportions to give you if you're wanting to use just part of a box. I go by consistency, so I'll show you the consistency I do. It's literally by sight for me. So inside this box, you get a little container, you get the highlighting powder, and then the developer. There's also a conditioner for after you're done. There's a little spatula to mix your formula and it's got a hook on the end if you want to use the cap, like the hat where you pull the hair through. So it comes with a cap like this. This is how a lot of people do it where they put this thing over their head <laughs> and they pull through hair through these holes. That is not how I do it. But that's how you can do it if you want to. And then it comes with this little plastic thing that goes over your head to keep the highlighting mixture moist while it lifts your hair color. I will use that. So to start, what I do is I open the powder and then I just dump some in, however much I think I need. I'm just gonna fold it up and save this for later. Then I take my developer and I'm going to dump a little bit in and then I'm going to mix and see what the consistency is. Like this was not nearly enough developer. You can tell that it's like clumpy. So we add a little bit more. This is still too thick because see, it's like a paste, but you want it to be a little bit more creamy. Okay, so that's a lot better. It probably needs a little bit more. You're essentially wanting it to um, not have any more powder left on it. I probably used about a third of the powder and a third of the developer. And so I should get three times of highlighting out of this kit. And the kits run around, oh, I think 18 to $20. I think it's probably 18. So it's about $6 per highlight for myself. If you're using the whole kit, obviously it's a little bit more expensive, but it's still cheaper than going to a salon and you know, while salons are not open, gotta do what you gotta do. Although I do this on my own anyway. So I'm actually gonna leave my hair in the part that I normally have because I want most of the blonde to be showing where I normally part my hair. Um, it's not as important for me to have it underneath. So I'm not a middle part person. I have been in the past, but I'm not right now. So it won't matter if my hair is blonde under here because it won't be seen very much. So I'm gonna focus on the parts that you'll see based on the way I wear my hair. So this is how I normally part my hair. So I'm also gonna take a piece of foil. I know this is not hair foil. This is kitchen foil. I am not using this for regular hair highlighting foils. I'm just going to use that for a barrier when I paint the highlighting cream on. So I will not be foiling my hair. So I'm just using a piece of kitchen foil. I didn't have any hair foil. 
I didn't have time to order any because I'm doing this kind of spur of the moment. So whatever. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with my the bigger side and I'm just gonna take a section of it, a small section. That's probably too much. And I want my highlights to be more like baby lights. They are not meant to be chunky. I do not want a chunky highlight in my hair. So I'm gonna do this and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my comb and I'm going to push down my hair and back comb it until I'm left with a few stringy pieces like that. And then I'm gonna take my foil And I'm gonna push this down. And if you'll notice, the teasing keeps this part from the roots. So my highlights will not go all the way up to my roots. That's part of balayage. Then I'm just gonna dab my brush into my highlighting mixture. And I'm gonna paint it on. I'm not gonna go all the way down because if you can see my ends are already blonde and I don't need to do that. But I'm just gonna get up towards the top. And then I'm gonna pull it off like that. I'm gonna look a real hot mess after a while. Then I'm going to take another section and I'm actually going to leave this front part out because I'm gonna come back and actually add a specific highlight towards the front. So that's probably a little too thick. And then I'm gonna do the same thing. And you'll have to forgive my hair. I have a lot of short pieces from when I lost my hair this last time. I'm gonna do the same thing. Tease until I have very little. Stick my foil on. And basically come up here and get some of the dark spots. And then I'm gonna pull that off. And I'm just gonna do a couple of sections of this. As you can see, like as I'm going through my hair, this stuff is all pretty dark. As you can see, I am not super accurate with this. Doing it this way, you don't have to be so much, which is pretty exciting. Once that side's done, I'm gonna just shift my hair over. And yes, it's a giant rat's nest now. That's okay, it will wash out. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. So I'm gonna take a section and I'm gonna tease until I get a small spot.
that is the top of my hair. The only thing I haven't done is the back. Now, this is harder to do when you're at home by yourself, but all I'm gonna do is kind of feel for where this is at. I'm gonna take my comb and part a piece out like this. And I'm going to tease this just the same as I did the other. I don't know how well I got the back, but it'll work. Now that the back and the middle is done, I'm gonna come in here and if you can see, I have some blonde already through here and through here. I'm gonna just touch up the roots on that and then I want to add a little bit of blonde through here too. So I'm gonna mess with that here. For this part here, this front streak, I'm just going to come up here where my roots have grown out a little bit and I'm just gonna add a little bit. And I don't need to be super accurate. You actually want it to kind of be an uneven line because then it looks a little bit more <clears throat> balayage natural. And I'm gonna do the same thing over here. So I left this part out, not on purpose, I probably meant to get it in this, but since I didn't, I'm going to go ahead and do this as a separate piece. And since I want a little bit more blonde in it, I'm not going to tease it quite so thin as I did the other pieces. Next thing I'm going to do is I actually like some blonde through the sides a little bit because when I pull up my hair I want there to be a little bit of blonde right here I don't want it to all be dark I'm gonna clip some of this out of the way and then I'm gonna take a piece this way and tease And since it's summertime, I'm gonna add one more. My full oil's about done. <laughs> pin the rat's nest on this side and deal with this. So I'm just going to carve out a piece right here. Tease. Pretty sure this kit comes with gloves and I never use them. 
because I do like to feel with my hands. And I can't do that with gloves on, so I do just wash my hands every time I touch the highlighting cream. Okay, just to top off our beautiful look, we're gonna throw on our little plastic cap. Try to get it all, you know, over all the highlights. And then you're gonna pin it. I'm so pretty. <laughs> yep, there was the gloves. Okay, I think that I usually do 25 minutes. You can do up to 60 minutes. Keep in mind, I have already previously dyed my whole hair, like roots. All of my roots that I just highlighted, I've already colored with hair color. Like, um, I'm probably naturally a level five or six for my hair. I color my roots a level seven just to bring them up a shade or two from for the blonde because um, I don't like my natural color. It's a little dull and a little bit too dark for my taste. So I did that two weeks ago and so I don't need to leave the highlight as long as I would on my natural hair. So with the blonde, um, I just, I think I'm going to leave it on for about 25 minutes. I'll come, come back and look at it after 25 minutes, but it's 9.45 right now, that's 10.10. 10. I'll come in and check on it, and then if it's the color I want, I will go ahead and rinse shampoo, you shampoo highlighting stuff out, and then you add the conditioner that they gave you. So, I'll see you in a bit. <sighs> Let's go wash. Okay guys, um, so sorry for the mowing and weed whacking outside. <laughs> But here is the finished results after I washed and blow dried. So if you can see, it's really, really natural highlights. They're very thin. That's the point of teasing your hair. And so you can still see the dark blonde. As you can see, my highlights do not go all the way up to my roots. So it just looks like a natural color. Here's this side. I love doing it this way with the teasing because it prevents any mistakes. Like there's no hot spots, meaning there's not like clumps of blonde where it's thick in one spot, maybe misses a spot and goes back into blonde, which you you get so, oh, doing traditional highlights and sometimes you get them even at a salon. Um, I've had hairdressers do that to me and not blaming them, it's fine, I always live with it, it's not that big of a deal, but um, this just provides such a subtle highlight and a natural highlight. I look so much more blonde overall, but it's such a light difference. So if you, so I obviously did this part and then separated and added some, and you can see it's not a ton of blonde throughout here but it's enough to just make a difference overall. And then down here, I didn't do anything, so this is back to dark. The sides are the same way. It's very, very subtle, but if I pull my hair up, it's not super dark. Now, the one thing that I'll mention that I did that maybe you wouldn't wanna do is I just put a streak of blonde here and here just because I know that that's where my part is and I don't wear my hair up a whole lot and when I do wear it up I very often will leave this part like I'll go here I'll do a low bun whatever every once in a while I'll go up here and then you would see this but almost always there's still a part in my hair when I do it so I don't worry about it but if you are somebody who wears your hair all the way back the way you would want to do the blonde in the front is you would want to take like your front piece and pull out a line like this. And you would want to actually add blonde to all of this and then just like a thin row 
And then when your hair is parted, like you can see my blonde streak right here, your hair would still have that blonde front. And then when you pulled your hair back, it would just be like blonde mixed in with kind of all the dark. So it would look a lot more natural. And actually next time I highlight my hair, I might do that anyway, just because, <laughs> because it's probably more proper technique than what I normally do. But you know, I'm doing it at home. I'm not being proper and I am not a trained cosmetologist or hairdresser. So, you know, let's not pretend that I'm an expert cause I'm not. But um, anyway, as you can see, the sides, I feel like are really natural looking. Even the back, like you could tell, I couldn't see what I was doing, but look how good the back turned out. So this technique of teasing and highlighting just little baby lights is the best. I highly recommend it. So now that I've done that, I am going to give my hair a trim. If you can see, like my ends are pretty not great. Um, I am dealing with hair loss. If you've seen my previous video, I posted a video about all about my hair loss and what happens to me. I have hormonal hair loss. So um, it's been almost a year or so since, maybe a little over a year since my hair loss started the last time. And it takes about six full months for my hair to completely like let go of its hair. And so it's been a little less than a year since my hair has started growing back. And you can see, I still have small pieces that are coming in. And then the pieces that have been growing for a while are longer. So like these pieces here in the front that almost look like I have fringe bangs, that's all regrowth from my hair loss. So that's, I don't know, four or five inches long. So you can tell that that's been going for a while. And then I have, you know, side pieces that have been growing in for a long time. So it'll take probably another year, year and a half for my hair to fully grow back in and be normal, but it's getting there. So my hair is not at its healthiest right now. And because it's super thin, it's, it's pretty fragile. So I'm just gonna do a trim and um, just try to make it look a little bit healthier after my highlights. I'll show you what I do to trim my hair at home. If you're trimming your hair at home, get yourself a good pair of hair scissors. You should not be using regular scissors ever on your hair. It will be harder to cut and it will not do a good job. So yes, I trim my hair when it's dry. I do not always do it when it's dry. Sometimes I do it when it's wet, but I find for whatever reason, trimming when it's dry gives me a better cut. So basically what you want to do is split your hair down the middle. It does not need to be a perfect part. You're just trying to bring the length to the front and I'm gonna cut off just about a half inch or so. Okay, so what I do is I just take the comb and I straighten my hair and I bring my first and my middle finger down along with the comb like on top and that just makes my hair lay out straight. And I'm just grabbing it like this. The way I cut my hair is just like straight across right here because the way I want it to lay in the back is like a little bit of a U. And so if you cut it straight across in the front, your front hair ends up being just a little bit shorter than your back hair, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna pull this down and then I'm gonna take about, I'm gonna take a little less than a half inch off because I want room to play with, but I'm just gonna trim across straight as I can. And then I'm gonna do the same process. I'm gonna do this a couple of times until I get a good straight line that I like. And see, there's always a couple little stragglers. So all I'm doing is kind of straightening that up. Then I'm gonna do the same on the other side. I'm gonna go under with my comb and Put my first and middle finger and drag it along with my comb. And then I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna come underneath my fingers 
and I'm going to trim about a half inch off. Okay. And then I'm going to do it again. I don't even know if you can see that because my hand's in the way. Trying to get this at an angle so you can see. That's all I'm doing is trying to get it straight. Now you can see from the front, it looks pretty good. If I go and I pull from both sides of my hair, the same from the same spot on the side of my head, and I pull it forward, it should be the same length. Okay, this side might be a little bit longer right now, but I'm not going to mess with that yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn around and you'll be able to see that my hair should start to come into a V. Now, the length right here is pretty long, like, I, like it's a little bit more of an extreme length. So. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my first finger and I'm gonna put it inside, touch my neck and grab the hair like this that's in the middle. And you can see that long part that I need to trim up. I'm gonna move my hand all the way down. I'm gonna bring my hand above my head. And actually I'm gonna bring it to the side so I can see. And all I'm gonna do is trim that little excess part that looked a little funny back there. I'm gonna trim it straight across. Now I'm gonna look at my hair again. The reason you start off with just a little bit at a time is so you have a little room to play so that you don't take off too much. This is actually how I want my hair to look. That's actually a really decent cut. I want my hair to come down a little bit in to a like V or a U. So I actually like the way that looks. So as long as these pieces are pretty close, this side's just a smidge longer. So I'm gonna come in here and just try to straighten it up a little bit. All right, now I look, and that actually does look about the same length to me. So I'm gonna double check the back. And as long as that's all laying good, that looks really decent to me. So that's pretty good. I'm going to leave that alone. Now, what I want to do is because, because of the way my hair is with the regrowth and stuff like that, I have a lot of short pieces. Um, in order to blend that in, I do like to like keep an angle of cut right here. Eventually, as my hair grows out, I might be I might end up growing that, but I don't mind having pieces that are like shorter and layered in the front. I think it's flattering. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to comb out this front piece and I'm just going to stick my finger in here as I'm combing it out. I'm going to go down with my first and my middle finger, and I'm gonna hold it. And as you can see, it's already at an angle, so I'm gonna trim up that angle. I'm going to go down my hair like this with the scissors, but I'm not gonna close the scissors all the way. I'm gonna do just little cuts like this as I go down, and that will keep this angled. And you'll see that I'm gonna move my fingers down my hair as I do it like this. So this, my fingers and the scissors will move at the same time. So it's gonna go like this. Just little cuts. Okay, and then since I already did this part, now I'm gonna take this next section and I'm gonna do the same thing. And do that until I get to the end. So now you can see I have an angled cut right here. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Okay. 
Now the other side is always harder. Depending on if you're right-handed or left-handed, the other side is harder. So I just did my left side because I'm right-handed, it's easier for me to do. Now my right side is harder because I'm using my left hand and I have to come around on top of my hand. So I'm actually going to pull almost like as soon as it's about to let, my fingers are about to let go, I'm gonna cut at that point. I don't even know if that makes any sense, but that's how I'm doing it. So actually the hair is in my fingers. So as my fingers are going down the hair, as soon as my hair is about to like come out of my fingers, that's when I'm trimming it. And then I'll do the same thing right here. So I'm going on top of my hand here and just very, very slowly. Okay, so that is creating that angle. Now, I did not do my bangs on that cut here. So I'm gonna go in and kind of point cut this, which just means you're not blunt cutting it across. You're not doing a straight cut. You're literally just going in vertically like this and you're just cutting pieces. And it just gives you a soft cut. So that's all I did there, point cutting my bangs. I'm gonna do a little bit more. My hair is looking a little bit sad right now. And actually I might do a little bit of point cutting on here because I am not happy with how my hair is looking right now. I'm gonna do a little bit here. And then I'm gonna do a little bit here. Okay. So that gives me a really soft like front to my hair. Now the other thing I do like to do is have a little bit of long layers in my hair. I find that as my hair is growing out as far as the regrowth, um, that it just makes it grow out a little bit smoother. So what I'm going to do is forgetting the front of my hair because I just already dealt with that. So I'm gonna kind of part that out. And then I'm going to take like the first section of my hair and I'm gonna use my first and my middle finger and I'm going to drag it out almost completely um, horizontal to my head. And then I'm gonna do the same thing I did on this part where I'm going to trim into like lightly as I go down. I don't even know what you call that, just not all the way. <laughs> and then I'm gonna do the next section of my hair and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna pull out vertical or horizontal to my head and lightly cut some layers, just like that, okay? And then I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side. So forgetting the front part of my head, cause I already did that. I'm gonna just take one section here and I'm going to pull it out horizontal to my head and I'm going to cut down and then I'm gonna take the last section Mind you, this doesn't take me very many sections because I have not very much hair right now. So maybe when my hair grows in, I might have to do an extra section on each side. But as it stands, this is how it goes. And then I do the same thing. Okay. So I just added in some long layers. That right there is how I trim my hair at home. I'm going to go add my extensions. I'll be right back. Okay guys, that is it.
I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. See more videos from me. I post on Tuesdays and Fridays, so there's always new things to see. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next video.